when you ran my truck out of gas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be me. <laughs> See if there's any worth the hoop? Oh, I think we better focus on the camera. Okay. Did that sound like a real bossy? Yeah, it did. I didn't it's mean all right. It. You'll get uh, better with it as it goes. Y'all, there is nothing like hunting with friends. This year, Mike, Stephen, and I ran to Wyoming with one agenda in mind, and that was to laugh our butts off the entire trip while we looked for deer and antelope. And I have to tell you, the trip was a success. Day one, we wake up bright and early. We get on the ranch before sunup, and we spot some deer way down in the bottom of this creek bed. As we got to looking closer, glassing and joking and farting and ribbing one another, Stephen says, hey, I think I got a good buck pegged up on this ridge. And as we worked our way closer and closer, seeing bobcats and all kinds of wildlife we decided that's definitely a deer we need to target He's done, don't shoot. It is so difficult to describe the feeling of when you get it done and when a close personal friend gets it done. And it's fantastic on both accounts. I love the freaking. He's got to be 38 inches wide. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, he's 30 from his tail to the back of his head. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> well done, boys. Awesome. It's time to celebrate and have some backstrap steak melts. Check this out. You've seen it before. Pretty good chance you're going to see it again. Rule number one, dice up an entire whole white onion, a handful of sweet peppers, and a jalapeno or a serrano. Brown that up, cook it down to nothing. I personally like them onions to be super sweet and dark chocolate brown or black. Then cut up your backstrap, dice it, season it with that Tony Sachery's Creole seasoning and put it right down in the pot and brown it up good. Then remove it off the heat. I had to make a makeshift bowl there out of a water bottle and then I butter up some bread I put some garlic salt on the outside a piece of pepper jack cheese wait let's pause for effect and then add your steak melt ingredients right back on there grill it up tight and when you see me you can thank me in person oh wow 
stuff. Did you make that, Ryan? Yeah. That is amazing. What is your trick? Tender heart. Really? I like it. Mm. Mm. With our bellies full of fresh venison, we head back up on the mountain where Steven sees another beautiful buck. We backtrack and work our way above this deer, dodging elk all the way there. And when we get up to him, we just can't get it done. Meaning we can't bring ourselves to shoot this deer on the first night with the hopes that we'll find a bigger one over the next two days. Some great advice. If you're trying to convince yourself that that's the buck for you, it's not the buck for you. Almost finishing out the day with a little redneck acupuncture, it was a fantastic first day. Hey, Did you hold that. Thank you. favorite hunt of the year. We're in Wyoming. We've been hunting for a couple of days. In those first couple of days it's so hard to film because you're just you're trying to get a bunch of good time in and seeing stuff. You're working so hard. Last thing you want to do is stop and turn on the camera. We killed a beautiful deer yesterday and it took some of the pressure off. So today we kind of split up and went for um, we went for three big walks and I wanted to make some film for you. I'm going to take the camera off the tripod and set up the glass and just pick this apart looking into the sun. This particular section of real estate on this property typically doesn't hold a lot of deer. But anybody that's ever hunted up here thinks that this should just hold a big deer. We've got more elk on this piece of property this year than uh, I've ever seen before. We counted over 100 head yesterday, and they're just bugling in and around us. And so, anyway, thanks for watching. Y'all, day two, we wound up just walking our butts off, trying to, more than anything, eliminate country. Just making sure we didn't leave any stone unturned and that's exactly what happened and sometimes you get some really neat experiences right in the mix take a look
Good morning, y'all. Day three. Mule deer and antelope hunt here in Wyoming. We had a great day yesterday. We found a whole bunch of new deer. I wound up taking an antelope. Kind of a hurried situation, so there was no film. It's the last day of the hunt, and I'm making a real slow, still hunt through the cottonwoods. One of my favorite things to do, and this ranch has turned into a whitetail and elk ranch. Less and less mule deer. But, one of the things that's so special about these hunts is you're walking around, you're chasing game, but all the stuff you get to see, big old sheared off trees, and shed horns, and frost on bushes, it's just fantastic. As soon as you leave here, you kind of feel it and appreciate it. And the older I get, I try and do a little more appreciating it while I'm here. And it makes for a much more enjoyable hunt. Okay, y'all. Wish me luck. Fist pound. The last day of our hunt, we decided to split up for the morning. Steven went out looking for a deer and an antelope. Mike needed to kill an antelope. And I needed a deer. You heard me earlier talk about cool experiences. After Mike picked me up and we were looking for Steven, we ran into a bobcat laying in the middle of the road. I have never had this happen, so I give him a little toss with a dirt clod there to get him up and moving. And if you look close, he's missing his right front paw. Wish I could move like that without a limb. Steven is a living, breathing predator, and when we finally connected, he had got his deer and his antelope harvested. And again, the pressure just came off. Thousand yards running. <laughs> right. So was the deer. Cool. He's red. Yeah. I think it's him. I think it's him too. I'm just judging by his front. Just the depth, tiny depth. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Because time was running slim, Mike and I slipped over the ridge in order to punch his antelope tag. And there's nothing again like hunting with friends because about 150 yards into our walk, Mike goes, hey, I'm gonna grab my gun. And he walked back to the truck as we giggled like schoolgirls because we had put packs on, grabbed a camera and left the gun sitting in the seat. Uh, good times. Although we weren't being too choosy, Mike and I snuck into two groups of antelope and just couldn't find the one we were looking for. So on our third attempt, we did a long belly crawl and got in position on a great antelope. And Mike, like always, put the hammer down and we got one animal left to harvest. Finally, it's all about me. Because it was the last couple of hours, we backtracked in and tried to locate some of the deer that we've seen all week. When I got close to this deer, I just couldn't shoot him. He's a great buck, but he needs another year. So as we drove back and I started to get that sinking, I'm not going to fill this tag feeling, we pulled up and looked on the skyline where we had seen the same group of bucks every night and there was a new deer in the bunch. So I leveled off, and just so you're clear, I know the backdrop, and more importantly, I know what's not behind there. And within 18 minutes of legal shooting light, I harvested this beautiful deer. Spin him a bit. Thank you, boys. We, uh, we earned it. We busted our tail for this deer, actually. <laughs> not the last final moments, but everything that led up to him. Oh. 
Congrats. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Bring it. I don't want you to feel left out. No, Mikey and I are going to hug it out. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> why did you, why did you get hugged? <laughs> oh, look at that. Damn. <laughs>